I'm Tamara and today I am going to walk you through all of the steps that you need to know so that you can make your own adorable pot holders using the scraps that you already have at home. So let's jump into that tutorial. Alright, so the first thing that we are going to want to figure out is are we going to do a proper bias tape binding or are we going to use the cheaters version of binding? For this tutorial, I'm going to walk you through the steps on how to do the cheaters version of binding. If you don't want to do that, then just cut your backing fabric the same as your front fabric and add that bias tape. You can always check out my placemat tutorial because I also talk about how to add the bias tape in that tutorial as well. So let's get to cutting that fabric. All right, so let's gather up all of our scraps from our previous projects. Most of my scraps here are from my placemat and table runner tutorial that I just did. And a lot of these are quite short. So some of these I'm actually going to sew together using a quarter inch stitch. And that will give me a bit of a larger piece of scrap to add to this pot holder. Now, this is the backing. And the backing, I will lay a piece of batting on top of that will be cut at seven inches by seven inches. And then the backing fabric itself is actually going to be cut at nine inches by nine inches. Then, I have another piece of backing that I will be sewing all of these scraps on top of. That is going to be cut at eight inches by eight inches, and then later will be trimmed down to seven inches by seven inches. All of this will be listed in the description down below. Now I do have a scrap piece of batting fabric here on the right and that's the fabric I'm going to use to lay out my scraps and decide how I want them to look and then when I bring this over to the sewing machine I'm able to easily just start sewing these pieces on to the actual pre-cut piece of batting by taking them off of the scrap piece of batting. And as you start laying your pieces together, just start working from the center and work your way all the way out to the outer edge. All right, so as you can tell in this video clip here, I am an incredibly indecisive person when it comes to trying to figure out my layout and how I want my scraps to look. The larger your scraps are, the easier this project is. The smaller, the more complicated, at least to me, uh, when I'm trying to put all of these pieces together. So I'm gonna fast forward on over to when I finally figure out my layout. All right, so I have everything where I want it on my scrap piece of batting. So now I am going to take my pre-cut piece of batting, the eight inch by eight inch piece of batting, and I'm just gonna lay it on top of this scrap piece here to make sure that I have enough scraps poking out the outer edges so I know that I will be able to add them to this batting here. All right, so one thing to note, when you are sewing all of your scraps onto your batting, you can actually do a larger stitch. I did not do that for this particular tutorial. I just stuck with the basic stitch that the sewing machine is set to. However, if you just lengthen that stitch a little bit, it'll give you a nice top stitch look, which I think could give each individual strip of fabric just a nicer look. So that's something to think about if you are going to start sewing this and you want to have that longer top stitch that that's definitely an option for you. All right, so now we are at the sewing machine and we are going to take our first scrap piece of fabric that is in the center of our pre-laid out pieces of fabric. We are going to lay it on top of our batting with the right side facing up. I'm just gonna sew that first straight line on down. I sew a little bit off the edge of the batting or you can sew just along the edge of that fabric. I like to sew three stitches across and then I sew back down, twist your batting, do those three stitches and then, oh, I gotta go back one, and then twist it around again and this is how I'm going to attach the first piece of fabric. The reason why I do those three stitches very close to the edge is because I actually don't want to see them when this project is done. So they have to be enough to the edge that I'll be able to cover them with the next piece of scrap fabric. And this is how that first piece of fabric is going to look on your batting. And now it's time to add the second piece of fabric, right sides facing together and then you are going to sew a quarter of an inch seam along that edge. Take it away from your sewing machine, snip those threads, and now it's time to take that scrap and flip it over so that it is right side facing up. 
And then we will do the same thing. So we will go back and forth along our entire piece of fabric and we will end up with a second piece of fabric attached to our first as well as attached to our backing. I hope that you guys are enjoying this tutorial. Before I carry on in the tutorial, I would just like to pause and ask you guys, if you could, please click that thumbs up button if you found this tutorial helpful. And as always, subscribe and hit that notification bell so that you don't miss future tutorials. All right, let's get back to it. So this is how it's gonna look so far. We've got two pieces of scrap on there. And now we are just gonna make our way around these scraps of fabric, doing the same thing that we did with that blue scrap of fabric. So we're always going to start with our fabric right sides facing together, so that quarter inch seam, then fold it open and then sew it down. So the main thing that you need to concern yourself with when you are actually attaching your pieces of scrap is that you can't go past your last piece of scrap. The reason for that is because then you will end up with an open seam. So since this is a scrappy project, of course all of your scraps are gonna be different sizes, but what I find works best is as you go along, then you start trimming your fabric to the length that you need for your next section that you're about to sew down. Now, if all of this scrappiness is getting to be a bit overwhelming for you, what you could do is take all of your tiny little scraps, sew them all in one thick row, attach them the same way that we did the very first little square that we attached onto this pot holder here, and then you can attach one large scrap along the top and along the bottom of that, and that will create this look here. So however you decide to make your pot holder, we can still finish it the same way. All right, so I have attached all of my scraps onto this back piece of batting, and now it's going to be time to trim this batting down to size. The size that we're gonna trim it to is a seven inch by seven inch pot holder. So the easiest way to trim your scrappy top is to take your already trimmed backing piece of batting, lay it on top, and then just follow around all of the edges and trim away the excess. Now you are left with two pieces that are cut at seven inches by seven inches, and you can sandwich both of those on top of your back piece, which is nine inches by nine inches. The way to center this best is just to measure all the way around. I'm using my sewing gauge here at one one inch all the way around and now we can start adding our binding. So just take one edge and fold it inwards, lining it up alongside the outer edge of the inner pot holder, and then fold it over one more time and clip it in place. And now we will work our way all the way around all four corners. To do this corner, first fold it in again along that inner edge, and then fold it down one more time so that it's just following along that outer edge. Once you finger press that down, then you've got your nice corner there you'll be able to fold it one more time match up those corner edges and pin that corner in place and then you can carry on doing the same thing all the way around each edge now just a note it's that last corner that's going to give you a little bit of grief so when you get to this point move on over to your fourth corner and then unpin a little down from the side and by doing that you will have given yourself a little bit of wiggle room to create that fourth corner and now it's time to take it to our sewing machine and sew along the inner edge of the binding that we've created. That way you will be able to secure all four sides in place. A nice way to do this stitch is of course doing that top stitch. So just making that stitch just a little bit longer than you normally would and it will give it a really nice finished look. And of course don't forget to do a back stitch to secure it all in place. So this is how that cheater's binding would look. And then this one here is the actual bias tape binding. And that backing there that I have, I did attach to a second layer of batting just by doing some extra random seams all the way across before I, of course, sandwiched it together and added that bias tape. And that, my friends, is everything that you need to know to make a pot holder out of scraps. If you found this tutorial helpful and you want to make more fun tutorials, I do have 
have the tutorial on how to make the matching placemats as well as the table runner tutorial and both of those tutorials I will link in the description down below they all use the exact same jelly roll and I managed to make three different projects out of it so I hope that you'll give that a try if you found this tutorial helpful please hit that thumbs up button subscribe and click that notification bell so that you don't miss future tutorials I hope that you guys have a wonderful day I'll see you next time bye